Whoa, there's already comments there. Uh, hello, everybody. What do we got here? How many people? It says zero people watching, but I got social worker or teenagers. Just want to say that you're an inspiration. On and off the mat, you are an inspiration. Do do. Hey, Christopher's here. Welcome, everybody. We're just going to give it a couple minutes for some more people to get here, and then I'll bring Kayla on, and we can let the questions fly. And remember, if you guys have any problems with, like, audio or anything, uh, just let me know. DK, I am pumped as well. This will be interesting. I can't wait to see what YouTube throws at her. This will be fun. I I personally have something I want her to do for everybody here, and I haven't even told her. But I'm gonna save it. I'm gonna save it to like the end. And I have her on Windows so I can see her, and you guys can't hear her. But she's dying laughing. She has no idea what it is. But I think everybody's gonna love it, and it's not bad. It's not bad. Don't worry. But I I purposely didn't tell you. Didn't tell you. LMK2, I am doing great, and I am excited for this. Super excited. More so now that I know she's nervous that I I have specific things to do. This will this will be fun. I think everybody else will really enjoy it too. I I have prepared something. Let's see here. Okay, so let's just bring Kayla in here. Let's unmute her. Say hello, hello, Kayla. Can everybody hear her okay? Make sure her audio is okay. Hey, Gary Goltz is here. Nice. Hi, Gary. So I guess we have our first question, Kayla, and it's about when we were training for the games, and it's how many times a day and days a week would we train? And how long uh, are the sessions? And they vary, but, you know. Yeah, so we did judo every day, twice a day, um, like an hour, hour and a half in the morning, an hour and a half, two hours at night. And in the morning, it would be mostly drilling-based, a lot of uchikomis, a lot of repetition, a lot of transitional moves, a lot of throws, stuff like that. And then at night, it would be mostly randori um, and then some technical stuff with Jimmy. And then I would go to lifting three to five days a week. And we used to oh. run, I think, maybe twice a week or three days oh, a week. Oh, I totally forgot about big gym sprint sessions yeah. until you said that. I was like, running? I hate running. I would never run. And I went, oh, really? that's right. That is completely right. <laughs> so, yeah, two to four weeks Ran like a, a day, duck. six days a week. And then on Sundays, I didn't do a darn thing. <laughs> Oh, I just remember those sprinting sessions. I feel like, I wish I had like, I really wish that we had taken video. We should have hired, like I wish we had like a marketing person to like take oh, those I pictures. I wish we had just like done a little like day in the life of like, we oh. would have been, I think we would have been YouTube sensations. <laughs> oh. Big Jim would have been Insta famous for big, sure. Big Jim would have been so famous. He would have gone viral every day, like <laughs> once a day. Can you imagine all the memes that would have been made out of Big Jim? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, um, his chest hair alone is worth its weight in gold. So we have another question here. Always wanted to have an amateur MMA fight. How long of training before a fight do you think would be good for a showdown slash blue belt who's done freestyle wrestling six months or more at an MMA gym? Yeah, definitely I would say six months minimum um you know getting punched in the face and kicked and <laughs> all that stuff is totally different than <laughs> grappling <laughs> okay everybody's got plan until they get punched in the face trust me um and not just grace but like actually like a solid hit it's like a liver yeah, punch it just sucks it gloves. out of you we're not, we're not talking like some like pillow like we're talking four ounce gloves okay this is not a joke this is not a drill this is real life. <laughs> you can get knocked the F out. Um, 
No, but I think six, I trained for a year before I made my debut. Um, and I was still really nervous and anxious about it, but I'd say, a, yeah, six months to a year is a good, good amount of time. Depends on the state too, right? Because some states have different rules as far as yeah. like shin guards, yeah. no shin guards, like, kicks to the heads. Yeah. States have different rules, matchups. Like obviously I would suggest matching, trying to get matched up with another grappler. <laughs> Keep it in the family for the first one. Some like Muay Thai, like undefeated striker or something. <laughs> so we got another question here. Um, well. My scrolling is way off. It says, nope, I went way too far. <laughs> My computer has been super glitchy just today. Yeah, yeah. Really got to like buy a new one, but they're so expensive. Um, <laughs> so Adam, her daughter, his or her daughter started judo with them at five. She loves it. She's now 12 with some typical middle school issues and not so typical issues. Do you have any advice on how to support her? I mean, I guess that depends on if she wants to quit judo or if she wants, what, I don't understand. Is that like how to keep her motivated? What's the question here? Like? Yeah, let's expand on that a little bit because I'm, I'm kind of with you. So how do you think the delay of the Olympics affects Team USA? Yeah, I've been getting asked this question a lot. And, you know, to be honest with you, that's how I knew the coronavirus was real. Like when they decided to postpone the Olympics, I was like, oh this isn't this is a real thing um and are they talking about team usa judo or just team usa because i think honestly it's going to be each athlete individually it's going to be up to them to decide mentally how they approach this you know and um it's either going to be it's i think the athletes that we're going to shine are going to find a way to be motivated find a way to be positive find a way to say hey look at this i got a year to get better and uh they're going to shine no matter what the obstacle is, a great opportunity to, to overcome this. But, I mean, it's going to be, you know, you know from experience, like, I wanted to quit a month before the Rio Games. <laughs> I was like, ready to be like, you know what? It's fine. I don't need another medal. I don't even care. So I can't imagine what these athletes are going through. That must be, must be tough. <laughs> I can't I that's the one that gets me is there's a lot of, especially in judo, just athletes that did that extra one because they, they sign on for four more years and now they're like, oh, I'm in my mid-30s. Like, I'm competitive yeah. now, but now what? Like, I'm so thankful I didn't do another one. No, even just thinking about like, I think about like all the Europeans. Yeah, they're in their mid-30s and mm -hmm. they're like, they're getting a decent paycheck, but they're not really moving on with their lives. And yeah. They're doing the same thing they've done for 20 years. Like, that's the oh kicker. God. It's the not being able to move on with your life. Like your whole life from family to jobs Every to everything is on hold. Yeah. Oh. Brutal. So Bradley's asking, you're so good at Ogoshi. What's the best grip or setup for competition, judo or MMA? Let's just go both because they're going to be different answers. Yeah, I would say typically Ogoshi. Grip it and rip it. it. Yeah, it's Big a gripping type of throw. I personally prefer to do a goshi against an opposite stance opponent. So it's a lot harder to do a goshi if they're righty on righty or lefty on lefty. Um, just because you would never, like, I would never naturally in judo grab around someone's back if they were right handed because that gives them a dominant grip on me. You know, I would want to be here or I would want to, I would be, want to be, you know, a high collar grip or I would want to be on the lapel. Um, and I maybe would go for Koshi Garuma, you know, but Ogoshi definitely opposite side stance for judo. Um, and in MMA, it's really hard to hit, you know, it's not something that you see a lot usually because people are so good at keeping their hips back. They're usually in a much more of a wrestling stance. I would say they're not really, like their posture isn't super straight. Um, and you also don't have anything to grab onto. So you have to do it from an underhook. You know, I preach, I mean, only what I've been taught, but obviously <laughs> underhook, 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 underhook. Okay. Oh, we the do power not, of the underhook. We do not headhunt. Okay. That is a bad idea. Do not do it. I accidentally have done it twice now in pipe and it was successful, but not a good idea. Okay. 
uh, <laughs> go for the underhook. I like to grab, um, and I'm, when I'm going to do a Goshen MMA, instead of going around the waist, I like to come up to the close shoulder and just grab right there and, and just rip it. Just fingers right into the collarbone. Just yeah, boom, suck exactly. it in. Yeah, exactly. Nice and tight. So here's another question that's fairly interesting. David's asking how, like, how much are you actually learning just from being around and experiencing, you know, other high level athletes, especially oh, since you've liked dual sport. There is a fly. Yep. It was right on your head. Everybody in the world saw that. Somebody, somebody clipped that out and throw it on Instagram. <laughs> um, what was the question? I'm like a sponge in the gym being around. First of all, I've always sort of been of the mentality that if you want to be the best, you have to train with the best. That's why I moved to Boston in the first place um, for my judo career, and that's why I moved to ATT for my MMA career. I really just feel like, you know, the best competitors in the world are here, the best female fighter in the world is here, and just being in the same room as them, um, number one, the energy, the positivity, the just overall atmosphere is a good training atmosphere, and just the knowledge in a room at any given moment is pretty ridiculous. You know, you got, it, it's just won't go away. You got, you know, Steve Mako, Mike Brown, Anderson Franca. You got all, like, these guys are all my coaches. Dude, son of a biscuit. All right, anyway, moving on. Moving on. So, Didi's asking, are you still training at home due to the quarantine? Yeah, so actually my training partner is here with me. Um, I made a move in, so <laughs> I can still train. Um, and we have training sessions every day. Gotta keep getting better. Somebody saw you on Impractical Jokers? What is that? Oh, you didn't know it was on Impractical Jokers? What is Impractical Pat? Jokers? Uh, it's this really dumb show. Um, They're wondering if you're going to do another appearance, but I don't know what Impractical Jokers is. So Impractical Jokers is this TV show where there's four best friends and they basically just play pranks on each other all the time and then like punish you. It's, it's weird, but it's like the number one show in America for males ages 18 to like 40. It's like super popular, super funny, like a jackass, but not quite. You know what I mean? Like jackass light. Huh. And one of the, they had me on a show to, as a punishment for one of the guys. Yeah, it says you threw somebody on a pool table or into pools. I threw a guy onto a table full of glasses and then I threw him um, into the pool at a party. So yeah, <laughs> it was cool. Breakthrough, Actually, thank you for becoming more, a new member. I'm more well known for that than anything else in my entire career. I didn't even know it existed, so wow. You're not a Dude, that's how the majority of my fans know me. Wow. I... <laughs> Actually, they offered me a job um, during the show. They were like, because I did such a good job, I guess, beating the crap out of the guy. They were like, do you want to Do you want to just follow us around and beat the shit out of Murr? <laughs> and I was like, thank you. But no, they... <laughs> I was supposed to be in the movie, but it... Uh, it's a movie? There's, there's a movie, yeah. I guess, or maybe it hasn't come out yet. I literally live in a rock, like right underneath it. Just my you world do. is crushed. Yeah, you're like SpongeBob. And for everybody here on YouTube that doesn't know, I my office has no windows, so I literally live in a box for like 12, 14 hours a day. Yeah. I just come out of my cave to to beat people up, and then I go back and sit in my chair <laughs> to feed. <laughs> Pretty much. <laughs> Yeah, they asked me to be in the movie, but it was at the same time as my MMA debut, so I couldn't. I didn't want to miss training to go shoot it. But yeah, it was a really cool experience. I would definitely do it again if they asked me. You can't just be like, "Hey, let me on the show." I mean, I'm not gonna like. I don't <laughs> want to do it, but I would do it. Like, I don't want to be like, "Hey, invite me out." Do you know what I mean? I, I they, understand. I Breakthrough. Thank you for becoming a new member. That means a lot. Thanks, boost boost her sound i think i did so hopefully our sound's been fixed for you guys uh richard we both trained at jimmy's club there's not really judo at the olympic training center at least you know when you talk about people who medal at the grand prix grand slam level now i have a fly that's what you get did you get yours I did. Son of a biscuit. 
Oh, so here's a question. This is interesting. Does Kayla think she ever had any fluke losses in judo? Fluke losses? Like oopsies. Like when I went to the Grand Prix in Abu Dhabi and I foot swept myself free poem. Uh, so funny. <laughs> <laughs> you know, like times like that. Oh, that See, people good. think I make that up. No, that happened. Yeah. It was like a banana peel. <laughs> yeah. Funny. <laughs> that was the same tournament where that girl in your division, she headbutted that Russian and split her head open. Remember that? Yep. Same oh, event. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah. She I was know. from like Cameroon or yeah. somewhere. And then you came back in the back and like threw your water bottle. Yeah. I was pissed. <laughs> you almost got spending. <laughs> Travis Stevens, the bad boy of Judah. Now I'm now I'm calm, cool, collected, and I've, I've <laughs> mellowed out in my old age. I don't really think I've ever had any fluke losses. I mean, I feel like I've gotten like, I remember one time I got disqualified for grabbing the leg right when the rule first came out, and I was pretty tickled about that. But other than that, every loss I've earned. <laughs> every win too, though. <laughs> so here's an interesting question. You can answer it or not answer it, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to let it fly just because I think you're comfortable with it. Um, okay. Do you have any PTSD from your past? Yes. <clears throat> yes, definitely. Um, and I suffered majorly from PTSD when I first moved to Boston, when I was first trying to get over um, being sexually abused. I don't know if you ever really get over that. It's not, so, it doesn't, um, it doesn't work like that. You know, it's something that to this day I deal with and I, uh, I don't want to say I have demons or anything because I'm at peace with it and I'm at peace with that part of my past, but um, it does affect the way I approach life in ways that I never even realized. So um, learning about that, learning about that part of myself, learning about maybe some of those issues that I buried. The hard part about being successful is like, you think, oh, she went to the Olympics. Oh, she wrote a book. Oh, she has a foundation. Like. In my mind, I'm like, oh, I'm cured, you know, I'm over it, I'm, I'm good. But that's not the reality, you know, the reality is I'm a human being and I have flaws and I have... Um, demons. Demons, <laughs> I have scars, I would say scars, I have scar tissue. And every now and again, you know, it gives me a little ache. But, um, you know, I still go to therapy to this day, I still work on myself in that way, work on my mind and, and healing my mind and my heart and my body and being... A complete person. So keeping with like the kind of depressing thoughts here, but this one a little bit more comical. Okay. okay. We got we got one from Jack Yuneska here and it's what's your worst competition memory? You go, then I'll go. But everybody knows mine, so it's okay. Oh, I don't want to talk about yours. Yours is yours is my worst competition memory. <laughs> <laughs> Dude. <laughs> that's says something that's like that's how deeply it affected all of us um you know i don't obviously in the moment i'm sure that i could like there were a lot of times where i was really unhappy or really upset my worst competition memory i'm so grateful for all of them you know time out the let's let's broaden it a little bit just to make this okay. interesting just to make this okay. interesting Worst judo memory, like on like, tour, like traveling, like, like wake, like like I remember when you tried to make seventy kilos. And, oh yeah, that was bad. And you went and did a speech somewhere in like Colorado, yeah. so you had to fly into weigh-ins, but your flight got delayed, and yeah. you were cutting weight in a song. Like that would be a bad experience, but it's not really a competition. But it was getting ready for, so it kind of fits yeah. the bill. But since I spilled that one, now you got to pick another one. Yeah, that's probably one that I would have picked. A good memory. Yeah, that was brutal. Um, honestly, I think I suffer from PTSD from Japan a little bit. Like, I'm not going to lie about that. The training camps in Japan, uh, they were ter I don't care what anybody says. I don't like Japan. <laughs> And that's nothing personal. It's just <laughs> I don't, don't enjoy my time there. 
Um, man, there's been a lot of times where it's just like you go and there's it's a really bad hotel and there's no AC or there's bugs or the food is terrible. But See, I think what a lot of people don't understand when you're a full-time athlete and you're training, like when people travel, it's a choice. Yeah. Like our, when we go places and we do things, it's not a choice. Like I didn't wake up one day and go, oh, it would be, it would, this is a good time of year. Let's, let's go to Japan. Let's go to Kazakhstan. <laughs> yeah, but it could be anywhere, right? But it's not like I ever yeah. really had a choice. I had, I had an option of choices, but it's like none of them are always good. No, I mean also our career. And then when career, you pick the location, our, like you don't even get to pick the hotel, the food you yeah, eat, like yeah, anything our like that. Schedule, our, our competition schedule, our everything was sort of – I mean it was our choice to put Jimmy and Big Jim in charge of our careers. But obviously if you want to be successful, you know that that's what you have to do. But if you're telling me every single March I'm going to go to Japan for two weeks – and do 50 rounds of Randori a day, and I have to, no, I did not enjoy that, okay? I did not enjoy it, but I'm thankful for it, but I don't like Japan. Uh, <laughs> that, that's it. That's my that's my answer. <laughs> oh, so back to the, the little girl question, they elaborated and said, just keeping her motivated. Mm, 12 years old? Mm. <sighs> I go about this one of two ways, right? Because I went through the same phase when I was a kid. I hated judo. I hated my mom. I hated everything. I was also dealing with a lot behind, you know, under the surface. And on one hand, I always think, man, I wish I could have just quit, but I wouldn't be who I am today if that had been allowed. So I don't really feel like it's, I think as our job as a parent, it doesn't, it's not our kid's job to love us. It's our job to love them and do what's best for them. So if what's best for them is whatever goal they set out for themselves, if, whether it's to get their black belt, then you say, no, you have to go to practice because you set this goal for yourself and I'm not going to let you quit on yourself. You know, I don't really, I'm not, I wouldn't let my kids quit anything for sure. But I'm not also not going to make them do judo. It's just, it's just, uh, man, being a parent is hard. <laughs> I can't even, I don't even want to touch these things, you know? Like, I'm like, I don't know. I struggle to, like, feed my dogs. <laughs> um, I think the best thing you can just do, just let her know you love her. Let her, let her you know, you, you support her. One thing that my grandfather always said to me that really um, made me not want to quit is he always said, quitters never win and winners never quit. And I would always think about that every time I wanted to quit. And it's I such a cliche. Up. I know, but it's true. Like, I would, he left that voicemail on my phone. Actually, when I was in Boston and I was thinking about quitting judo, and he said, Your mom's telling me you're having a hard time, and I just want you to remember one thing you know, winners never quit, and quitters never win. And, like, <coughs> it, would, it would keep me up at night. Like, I didn't, I didn't, uh, I wanted to be a winner in life, not just on the mat, but in life. So. I think, be supportive, be firm. I think that's one thing that people don't don't realize is if you want to win at just life in general, it if you could win at life, you'll win at sports. But if you win mm -hmm. at sports, you don't necessarily win at life. Mm -hmm. So it's always better to just focus on just the idea of never quitting at anything you do, right. re regardless of it's sports or not. Right. And I'm not saying yeah. like... I'm not saying, you know, it, when I say winning, I don't necessarily mean being first or being the best. I just mean like your mentality, the way you approach things as a winner in life. You want to be successful. You want to be the best possible version of yourself. That's what I mean when I say winning. You know, I'm not saying you got to be world champion. I'm saying you got to, you got to be the best you. So I got to answer a question here just in the comments. Michael. I drink way too much coffee. Like, no, I know. Like way I too much. No, you have a problem. Yeah, I. Yeah. Are you still Are you still a McDonald's man through and through? You quit McDonald's. I've actually, in the last, call it three months, we've hired a chef, 
and the chef prepares all of our meals to rob specs for food and they they deliver it because i was getting so busy at work i was like i can't leave my desk for 30 minutes i just i'd get anxiety because i have to get stuff done so i wouldn't eat but then i would go home and like two boxes of mac and cheese a a full cake like just ah, because i wouldn't eat that's the travis i know and love yeah (laughs) so now my food is like portion control that goes in the microwave they, sh- they deliver it three times a week awesome so that stopped but michael yeah way too much coffee uh, but i could drink this and fall asleep with it on my chest at the same time i yeah, e- i've even got the diet coke to wash it down yeah i just you know if it ain't broke don't fix it i'm not judging you but you're judging me <laughs> it's okay i don't hey I, I don't have a lifestyle for everybody I don't need your approval. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so Alan's asking, what's harder? What's a harder training routine, judo or MMA? Judo. <laughs> you know, I've I've dabbled in MMA and like helped those guys train, and I've done jujitsu and I've done judo. And people just they'll never get it, having never done it, because you could you could walk into like a high level MMA school and participate. You could mm-hmm. walk into a high level jujitsu school and participate. Mm-hmm. You can't walk into a high level judo place and participate without being mm. high level. Like it, mm. it doesn't work. Same, same thing with wrestling. No, it's just, you just can't do it. Like you can't just be like, ah, oh, I have like three years of training. I'm just going to go wrestle Jordan Burroughs. It doesn't, it doesn't work that way. It doesn't have those like levels. It's it's well, like it's, we're either up here or we're not. I don't know. Also, what I've come to realize is like in MMA, you're practicing so many different things and you're doing such different stuff. Like I'm never bored, right? Because I'm grappling one day, then I'm striking, and then I'm doing this, and then I'm doing jujitsu, but then I'm focusing on my wrestling, but then I'm going to incorporate my judo, and then I'm going to do some Muay Thai, but then, okay, I'm going to do some boxing. And I'm at such a white belt level in most of them that – it's all different parts of my body. It's all different workouts. It's all totally different and new and exciting. And judo is like, especially when you get to a high level, it's fine tuning. I mean, how many, you want to talk about Ogoshi, like how many Ogoshis did I do in my life? Probably 10 million just trying to fine tune and perfect the (laughs) smallest of details. Do you remember before, before Rio, uh, you and I were both getting injured from drilling because we did the same rep. Yeah, body parts were starting to break down yeah. from use. Just literally using them over and over and Way over too and much. Over. Yeah. Way that's too it. much and, and too I mean, consistent. Way more of a grind on your body, Judo, and it's may, way more of a mental grind, I would say, too, just because it's like, it's not... Number one, there's not going to be any fiscal rewards, right? You don't do judo in America because you want to be rich. Number two, you don't do judo in America because you want to be famous. Number three, you don't do judo with the hopes of like, there's no real reward at the end of it except for your own personal, like whatever goal you set out for yourself. There's nothing like, there's no outside or external rewards. And it's also like, it's there's no season. You're, you're preparing for everybody at all times. You know, you don't know who you're going to get first round at every tournament. You can't say, all right, I'm going to train eight weeks for this one guy. Like, that's not how it works. And it's, it's just a grind mentally, physically. You're traveling. It's a grind financially, you know. A different level. Yeah. I mean, it's fun. It's like... A, it's a, it's a, it's like jujitsu. It's, it's not as like rough. It's not as physical. It's a little bit more of like a chess match, like a dance. Yeah. And I mean, you're also not like, you know, because you're getting hit in the head, you're not going, I mean, I only spar twice a week and mm-hmm. then technical spar once a week. I do, I grapple live every day, but it's not, it's not the same as doing Randori every yeah. night and getting smashed on your head and like, you So know. here's a question. Here's a question. And it may not, it may not fall true to you, but just out of curiosity. Okay. During a week, during a week, okay. how do I want to phrase this so it makes sense? Because, um, no, but this will be an interesting, interesting, I think, for everybody. So, 
when you talk about like hard blows to the head, right? Yeah. Like even moderate, we'll go moderate blows to the head. Where do you get them the most? A judo training camp for five days or MMA training for five days? Right? Because when I'm at training camp, my head gets hit with hard overhands a lot. I hit the mat it's, all the time. I'm a technician. You know, I'm not an ogre. <laughs> I'm not a brute. I'm very tactical. <laughs> um, <laughs> ooh, I don't know. It's close. I mean, it's cl- I don't really. My goal in MMA is not to get hit. You know, is don't get hit. <laughs> So I make that very, like, I make that window of getting hit very small. Now, I will say I definitely, it's a different kind of hit when you get hit in MMA versus when you, like, but I mean, all of my injuries are not from MMA. They're all from judo. Mm-hmm. My, my, you know, my neck, my hips, my knee, my shoulders. It's all from judo. Like, I heard my, it's all. I've never gotten a concussion in MMA. I've never tweaked anything that, you know, wasn't already injured of judo i've literally never heard a body part in mma that's not true my toe nail fell off fell off but i don't know how that it's happened i think I, I think i dropped a weight on it anyways you dropped the weight on your own foot i don't I'm, I'm glad you threw that out there for the world that makes me that that makes me happy i heard that but we got a super chat here from grady so thank you and what, what? what does that mean um, you can basically pay money to the channel to make sure that your your uh, comment gets seen by us. So it, oh. it highlights it, I guess, in like a teal color here for me, and it put it up on the screen. All right. Well, let's see what it has to say. Um, what he has to say. Uh, recent BJJ black belt. So congrats for that. Um, how long to get your judo black belt with good BJJ takedowns? Wish it was just old school judo. So how long do you think if, if you took like a qualified BJJ black belt to get a judo black belt? I mean, I'm no expert. I would say probably like. I'm going to go three, three, go three years. years. Yeah. Yeah. That's three what years. That's what, that would, that's what I would say for an adult, three years. Yeah. And I think a lot of people need to understand that a jujitsu black belt is like a mastery level. A judo black belt is like, oh, you have a good firm understanding At and now beginning. <laughs> yeah, it's like the start. And now you're yeah. now you're kind of like free to go practice and develop your style and educate and really perfect the sport. Black belt really means like, all right, you we know you are going to get hurt or kill yourself. Yeah, <laughs> like, okay, you, you can are, go to free training now. The dojo. <laughs> yeah. It's definitely not, yeah, BJJ black belts are very hard to get from what I understand. So it's totally different. Oh, so Didi has a good question. Um, do you have a mantra or quote? And I know you do. So has it changed since judo to MMA? Uh, no. I mean, the words have changed a little bit, but the I want to hear both. The principles. So, um, <laughs> I'm put you on the spot. Have, why are you laughing at me? What's uh, so just, funny? It's just funny. Uh, my mantra is: This is my day. This is my purpose. I'm not afraid to win. Kayla Harrison, Olympic champion. One more time, just in case they missed it. <clears throat> This is my day. This is my purpose. I'm not afraid to win. Kayla Harrison, Olympic champion. And the mantra has stayed the same, except now I say Kayla Harrison, PFL champion, or Kayla Harrison, world champion. I mix it up a little bit. But, you know, I always say that, and then I say, I I used to always walk myself through a judo match, but now I say, you know, (laughs) 15 hard minutes to win, 25 hard minutes to win. You know, do you want it? Go get it. One... You know, one punch at a time, one exchange at a time, one minute at a time, one breath at a time, one round at a time, stuff like that. And I just kind of repeat it to myself over and over again. You are the best, the best, the best. Kayla Harrison, PFL champion. Um, so I got I to gotta respond to a comment here from Viking81. And yes, I look like Sloth from the Goonies. Partly because I have so many scars and just my face is swollen from scar tissue and I put on like 25 pounds. So it happens. But you know what? I'm happy. I enjoy life. All and that it is what it, yeah, that's all that matters. What do I care? Um, <laughs> Marty's here. So hi, Marty. We have an Olympic medalist Marty, in here. What? Yes. I wish I would have known she was here. And she goes, <laughs> how can you make fun of her for having two cats and now you have two dogs? Let's hear it. Uh, 
Okay, well, first of all, I didn't buy either of these dogs, okay? <laughs> they were gifted upon me against my will. Uh, one of them is my exes who didn't want him, and he's a beautiful boy. I love him, so happy to have him. And the other one, Dobby, who's right here, he looks like Dobby the house elf, doesn't he? Show him. Say hi, Dobby. Are we showing our dogs now? Is that what we're doing? <laughs> doesn't he look like Dobby the house elf? He looks confused right now. Well, he's happy. This is his moment to shine. He's thrilled. Oh, you know, um, what we, you know what we should do? We should take a okay. poll here. Come here, buddy. No. Well, Gates, come here, Gates. Excuse me. Gates. Whose dog, Scooter? Come here. No, this one. Come here, Gates. Come here. <laughs> no, yeah. You want to see the cuter little... No, you got to stand up. Stand up, baby. It's a oh, dog showing contest here. Gates, Anyways. get up. Don't lay down. Okay, stand up. See, look at how handsome he is. Oh, he's so handsome. Okay, don't fight. Don't fight. Don't fight. So one is my... Gates is so regal. He's like a, he's like a prince. Um, and this dog was... My coach found him. My coach's girlfriend found him in a parking lot, and then my teammate took him, and then my teammate moved out of his apartment into the dorm so he couldn't keep him, and nobody wanted him. And I said, okay, I'll take him. So I got to ask this because we are finally off of, you know, branded channels. This is, this is just me and you here. Here we go. Gary Goltz. What does judo need to grow in the United States? Ugh. Here we go. Your honest opinion. The new regime? I mean. That's all you got? I think that they need to put someone on. I think that. They need to get out of their own damn way, you know? I think that they need to pay their athletes, pay their coaches, set up a real actual initiative in order to map out a plan so that these athletes can be successful. <laughs> like, you can't just say, oh, you can go here, you can go there, you can do this, you can do that, but we're gonna pay you when we can. Like, that's not, that's not a recipe for success, it's a recipe for disaster, and having no one in charge or at the helm who knows what the hell they're doing you're never gonna you're just gonna just aimlessly search like you're not gonna do anything you're just gonna be there's nothing's gonna happen you're gonna have zero olympic medals you're gonna have zero world championship medals you're gonna have zero success if you don't have someone who in charge who knows what they're doing you can't get anywhere don't get me started i don't want to be i want to i want to get you started that's why we're here well you didn't tell <laughs> I wasn't going to. <laughs> but we got another super chat from James. How has your training changed since the COVID-19? Like, do you use grappling dummies or anything? Or is it pretty much business as usual, just not as many training sessions? Yeah, just not as many training partners. You know, more just one-on-one. -on -one. And, uh, yeah, only once a day right now, unfortunately, which gives my life not enough structure. <laughs> But my life is pretty boring already. I pretty much just train, eat, sleep, repeat. So um, I'm pretty lucky that it hasn't affected me too, too much right now. I guess I miss my friends and my family. Uh, Dane has a question here that says, did you notice any big gaps in your career later on as it went that you had to fill? And if so, how did you incorporate it into your style? Into my judo career? Yeah, I think so. Um, and Marty, yeah, the dog show had to happen. He's been he's had his head down here the whole time. <laughs> couldn't couldn't let it go. Dobby and Gates are cuter. Um, Not according to Chet. Trapper, trap, trap. Um, big holes. I think that I always honestly struggled. My kryptonite throughout my entire career was tall lefties who oh. did. Mata. Everybody, so. everybody, <laughs> so. and that goes for all the other tall lefties fighting another tall lefty. Yeah, so that was definitely a hole that I had to. I mean, <clears throat> the only girl who has a winning record on me in the history of judo is Abigail Yo, and she's the. Is tall that lefty. how you say your name, Yo? Huh? Is that how you Yo. say? It? Yeah, that's I always call I her Joe. I don't know. Yeah, I know. Well, I I'm butcher sorry. everybody's name though. Um, I know. <laughs> Uh, so yeah, and I think really, actually Travis was the one who kind of helped me, uh, me? 
Yeah, your gripping sequence against lefties of killing that front sweep first um, instead of going inside to the lapel or anything really changed how I fought against tall lefties who did Uchimana. This guy. So, yeah. So on that note, before we answer any questions, I want to kind of give everybody a uh, time here just to kind of reminisce with you. This is my this is my surprise. Oh, but wait, Grady's got another super chat here, and we gotta we gotta answer this before we move on. So, could you take the time to explain judo changes from the time of Kano for the purposes of the sport? Leg, basic attacks, and a living lots from Fukato. Fukada? I'm not sure what Fukada is. Uda? No. F-U-K-A-D-A. Fukada? Okay, keep going. What's the question? How, what's the differences? Like, what's the tr what's happened? Can you take the time to explain judo changes from the time of Kano for the purpose of sport? Oh, so he's basically asking, like, from when judo first started to becoming, like, an actual Olympic sport and, like, the changes, I think, from where it was then to where it is today. Oh, totally different. I mean, night and day, I think. Um, you have to understand that judo, judo as a martial art and judo as a sport are two different things. In my yeah. um, and, and they're two different people. Yeah. Like, yeah. judo as a sport involves tactics and gripping and, uh, you know beating the system almost, beating the rules, finding a way to, you know, finding a way to win. And that's not really judo as a martial art at all. You know, it's a practice of, um, it's a practice of really beautiful techniques and mutual benefit and um, it's totally different. But I think if you can combine both and you can use the martial art aspect of it to become the best at the sport, then you, then you found a way. <laughs> Yoda-ish right there. And I think it's going to actually, the sport's going to go back towards that more leg oh, grabby yeah. kind of style. Maybe not this coming quad, but the one after for sure. <laughs> but anyways. Judo is also cyclical, you know? It, everything comes in cycles. The, the most popular throws and the most popular niwaza and... The way we grip and the way we don't grip and the way, like it, it all is cyclical. Ava, I'm not sure. Um, the fearless gi that she has should be back on the shelves as soon as we're out of, you know, this kind of pandemic and what? I don't know that you guys make them anymore. Do you? I don't know. Uh, once the designs are done, you could always just press reorder. I think. But I think I talked to Jimmy um, a while ago about having you do like a new like rebrand of it. Crap. Okay, yeah. we're moving locations. Moving locations. My battery's dying. <laughs> so guys, before we get back to the questions, um, oh, so you're, you're dying. That's what's going on. Um, as soon as she gets settled. Okay. I could have just brought my charger out, I guess, but it's all good. Christiane has a question here while you're getting all set up. Um, okay. Interested on your thoughts on the USJF, USJA split and how it affects judo in the United States. USJA, USJF split? Yeah, because there's USA judo, there's the JF, there's the JA. Like, How does having all three kind of affect judo in the United States? Um... I think that any time you don't have one national governing body, you're going to see, you're going to have issues in terms of success and helping grow membership because it doesn't make any sense. You're all trying to grow judo in the United States, but you're all like, no, this, my way is the best, this way is the best, that way is like, you all have one common goal. So why wouldn't you be one? People love power, man. Even like the smallest amount of power, like this is like little tiny, like, oh, I'm in charge of this. So I'm important. Like, I don't understand it. Like, no, put your ego to the side. Let's all come together. <laughs> Make judo great again. Johnny, yes. If you plan on doing any sort of takedowns, like, even for wrestling, buy a crash pad. Your adults will thank you for it. And they'll come mm. back for more. Mm. But anyways, I want to get into this because I think you stop the questions just so that um, I think a lot of people just enjoy it. And it's kind of what I want to do. So 
I'm going to do it. But, <laughs> yeah, what are you going to do? But what are you going to do? I was fortunate enough to have an uncle record the 2016 Olympics. So I have your Olympic final here. Oh, no, really? I really do. The full thing. All of it. So I kind of want to play it for everybody to watch and just kind of have you give everybody like your thoughts on what's going through your head, what's happening in the match. Okay. So let's, yeah. let's pull yeah, it up really quick. Yeah, I haven't watched this Olympic in a long time. So here we are. You can see it, right? Look yeah, I can see oh, it. Oh, here we go. <laughs> Dude, right? I watched mine for the first time, so here we go. Oh. At the same oh, time, so Audrey, a lot of people don't Gimeno know this, but I get France, uh, two really, really, world, really dry mouth when Brazil, I'm nervous, hometown, and Chico, I constantly need water. So even like right now, Jimmy, like they they have the people who hold the baskets, but I always make Jimmy hold my water for me because I always want to drink right before I walk. And uh, I do that now to this day in MMA. Like Mike Brown holds my water. And as soon as I get in the cage, I'm like taking a swig. And then I like walk a couple steps. And I'm like, no, I need another swig. Like I'm so nervous for some reason that I'm going to get thirsty in the middle of a five minute or four minute exchange that I'm like, what if I don't have enough water? Like <laughs> it's like this weird thing in my brain. I don't know. JR, thank you for the super chat. But I got to ask a question here because when I was making this video, I noticed this and it just kind of just curious. So if we go back here, what's on her lip? Is it like Bro, I, chapstick or like chalk I, or like, is this normal? Blood, I think she, no, no, no. She had tape on there because she had got a bloody lip earlier in the day, maybe. Ah. Uh, Which doesn't make, uh, I'm not going to talk crap. Never mind. <laughs> I was going to say it doesn't make any sense because Audrey would want any excuse for the match to be paused so she could catch her breath, but that's not nice. <laughs> I said it anyways. Oh, well. Grady, thank you again for the super chat. And as far as Henzo's versus the Olympic camp, the Olympic camp by far. If you've never done lineups with high-level people, oh. it, it especially when you have an ego, right? Because that's what really kills a lineup. Like if you're willing to get thrown and take a fall to like take the easy road, training yeah. is easy. But when you have that pride, like... When you have that oh, pride, but you have nothing pride. left in the gas tank oh. and you're just like, God, why can't I throw them? That's when I get violent. Angry. <laughs> that's Angry me that, comes out. I miss that so much sometimes. <laughs> I miss that feeling of like us against the world. Brazil, like it really felt like us against Shido everyone in that room. And I just right? hated the all of them. In the world from the United States. You would see them all scheming on the side like, oh, you go, then I'll go, and then I'll get them tired. And it's like, I, yeah. Oh. Against Slovenia, I have a, I have a picture of calm, cool, collected. Different, don't they? They're still Alan, no, I never fought uh, Flavio after my BJJ black belt. Uh, he was retired by then. The American, and here she comes, the lip and Ava early, never used judo in real life. Down. We're not really that confrontational. We fight so much in the dojos that actually yeah. getting into an altercation outside of it just, I don't have the energy for that kind of stuff. Because nobody's been I've never been in a real fight. A long time now. <laughs> David, that's right. The yeah. only cure for pain such is more pain. Just, just ride it out. She's once you're, once you're down that rabbit hole, just keep really, it going. No, 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 no. This is not the Travis talk. This is the Kayla talk. I do not support that message. Kayla Harrison is just going to be so strong for So before we get started, just out of curiosity. Yeah. Um. More nervous for this one versus the first one? Because when I went out for my final, I wasn't nervous. I was actually really excited for it. Yeah. Um, but because this is a second one and you don't want to do worse than the first one, it kind of like maybe it is a little bit nervous. I think they were... I think they were... Uh, yeah, I was nervous. I was really nervous mostly because I had just trained with her a month before. And Big Jim made us go to a train. Remember when we went to Croatia, France, or every Hungary, like that last leg? Of oh, the... you mean when I was hospitalized and had to get rushed yeah. there? Yeah, you think I, I forgot? Yeah. No, yeah, I remember that. Just, re just giving a pleasant little reminder. Yeah. Uh, um, and during that, Dobby, buddy, Dobby, and during that time, uh, she whooped on me a lot during that training camp, but also because she was doing like three rounds a day and I was doing like 20 rounds a day and also lifting and Big Jim was like, you don't win practice, you win the tournament. 
we're figuring her out right now. You're going to be, you know. But that doesn't help when you walk out, out there. No, it doesn't help <laughs> in the moment. And it doesn't help, like, I was nervous. I was nervous. I was like, but you, that's when the positive thoughts just have to take over. And you have to just be like, no, F that. Like, I'm not afraid to win. Kayla Harrison, Olympic champion. I'm not afraid to win, you know. Gary Gold, thank you for the super chat. Right but game. we don't drink. We're you athletes. This so, but we'll definitely pick up some sodas and coffees. From America, no beers, though. I mean, we're, we're, we're in training. London, You're in training. Four years ago <laughs> in blue. France versus USA. <laughs> okay, wait. So being, a, being a good retired teammate. Listen, training. I want to tell the people something else. A little inside tidbit. Okay. So, tidbit, tidbit here. Also, I do drink, by the way. He's wrong. Um... <laughs> Uh, not a lot, but, uh, a lot. uh, no, I don't, I, I have, if I have a glass of wine, I'm like, <laughs> um, what was I going to say? Oh yeah. Okay. So when I walk onto the mat, people also don't know this about me. Not only do I get a really dry mouth, but I get really sweaty feet and hands when I'm nervous. So the bottom of my feet actually sweat, which is weird. I know, but it happens. So when I walk onto the mat, I'm always like rubbing my feet on the mat and rubbing my hands on my gi and rubbing my feet on my gi. And I do that in MMA still because I get really sweaty feet and really sweaty hands. But it doesn't matter so much about my hands, but my feet get really sweaty and I like have to like rub them on the canvas. Yeah. All right. So that's all I wanted to let them know. Fun fact about Kayla Harrison. She has sweaty feet. <laughs> <laughs> so here we go then. <laughs> one way with, uh, her Good tidbit for everybody. She's got oh, uh, no groundwork uh, to speak of. Oh, man, I have and there, Harrison oh, straight man. into the attack. Harrison so aggressive oh, yeah, here. Can't... Three oh, attacks, God. four Either. attacks there. Straight into the uh, attack here. And my goodness me, Chameo oh. now knows that she's my in bad. an Olympic final. Can she didn't know. I can see you. Right. She does it's now. time for my niece's second story. Oh, what? That's the duration Sorry. Of the three bouts no, no, I, we can Harrison keep talking, but she's trying here. to face me. Let yeah, me just she's text done her. it so easily. She is superior in the way. That was a good, uh, as she was, a foot sweep there. Koichi Gary there, taking the leg away. Yeah. Almost oh, scoring. We gotta, we gotta back this yeah. up. And there, Harrison straight into the attack. Harrison so aggressive here. Three attacks, four attacks there. Straight into the <clears throat> Do you ever just try to whip here. girls with and your hair? My goodness me. Like it's just Chimeo kind of flopping around. Now knows that she's in no. an Olympic final. <laughs> Weirdo. You're right, she does now. Did you plan to start with that armpit grip on the collar? That's Is that like a plan for her? Kayla Harrison has been in to get here. Yeah, she's done it so yeah. easily. Yeah, she's trying to get the lapel. In the way. That was a good. Look at that. Uh, she Ooh, was a foot sweep. Right off the rip. There, yeah, a little cross grip coach. Almost scored. Yeah, on sir. That brings back. That brings some memories. I know we do. Only the side I could do that in my sleep right now. Scores. Look at that gripping on the sleeve. Ooh, look at that. Another one. Up, up. Dude, the one key with Audrey was I couldn't let her power grip me. I couldn't hold still. Left drop Sayo. Did anybody else catch that? Really? Because she ripped <laughs> out, so her power grip was coming, and the goal is, listen, do not let her get a high grip on you. That's when she's most dangerous. So you got to move, move. Also, she doesn't have the, that great of cardio, so you got to keep moving, keep moving, keep moving. Just attack, 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 attack. Break her down. I don't know so if you guys can oh, tell this, but she's getting a little amped right now. Maybe we can get her back to judo if we just keep replaying these matches. No, no, absolutely <laughs> not. Absolutely not. I'm done. Judo. Um, Christiane, this is actually the first time I've ever watched it. The the one downside to going to the games is you don't actually get to ever hear the commentating, because when you're in the in the village, even watching the other matches, it's like a silent feed for whatever reason. Kayla, do you think your transition to MMA would be easier or more difficult if you came from a striking art such as boxing? Still nothing from Chimeo. More difficult, for sure. Grap being a good grappler is way better, in my yeah, opinion, so than that was being a really good call. Absolutely. I mean, good I'm call. obviously biased, but... And, uh, seven attacks, yeah, should uh, have been. So Chimeo now got to think about how she's going to grab hold no, of Harrison. No, you can also win in a lot faster than a grappler, but... She wants but that second Olympic gold medal. I don't know. I think yeah, there's just more ways to win if you're a grappler. Big arm my, I don't know. Yeah. yeah. So it's going to be another penalty here uh -huh. for Chimeo. Chimeo yep. tucked under. She's falling and apart and we're not even halfway. Just, 
or Hang on. over Chimeo. Oh. And like I said, Chimeo just had that one attack that she was doing. She There's a left drop Chimeo again. I've seen her doing it. Uh, now, under, but... did you actually ever practice a left drop Chimeo before this, or did you just make this up in the final? Threes. <laughs> Sorry, okay, so I'm having technical difficulties. I'm on 2%. Um, hang on. <laughs> Don't get mad at me. He's going to get mad at me. I'm on 2%. I'm trying to log into my phone, but I can't remember my password for Skype. Oh, you don't have a charger? It's an iPad. Yeah, it's on, the it's on the charger, but you're sucking the life out of my... This is an old iPad, okay? I'm not like a... I don't have all the cool new toys. This is an older one. Let me just see if this works. Hang on. Okay, so what was the question? Did you actually practice a left drop sail ever, or did you just make this up in the Olympic final? Cause I'm not gonna lie, I've made up I've made up moves before in competition, just throwing it out there. No, I practiced uh, I practiced left sail, just not for righties. I don't know what I was doing. I was winging it. Just winging it. <laughs> Uh, David, Boston to New York car time is about four hours. Yeah. I wasn't winging it. It was just the goal was to just keep her moving, keep her moving, keep her moving, you know? Mm-hmm. All right, you can continue. Right. If I die, been on I'll come back. Day. I hope so. No, I mean my battery. She knows she's good. She knows she's good. She's Shemayo okay. knew she was good, but she's starting to... Got to fix the hair. She was Got to this well, She's so good, in fact, when she won that gold medal. She looks run, tired. She didn't know it, but she had I a told you. knee injury. Ended up needing... Get that sleeve. Do not let Who that... Who did she beat in the semi? She's just a, a force to be reckoned with. Uh, Myra. Well, absolutely, she the is. Brazilian. And I said How? earlier, she's one more... He's creeping this up. See, this is danger. Danger, danger, danger. Danger, danger, danger. Danger, danger, danger. In this Olympic final, with two minutes to go, halfway to gone now. Still in the Make stuff up, make stuff up. Yep. Make stuff up. Kayla Harrison. Because Chimeo does that well. Wow, she wasted that grip. Oh, we lost her. Well... We lost Kayla. Oh, terrible. Let me. Oh, hold on. I think I think I got her. Give me a second. Technical difficulties here. Give me a second here, guys. I'm gonna try to get her back on the on the phone. And yeah, I can't believe this this software still uses Skype, but I don't know. It it does what it does. No, 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 no. She'll she'll come back. She'll come back. Grady, thank you again for the super chat. How do you implement Kazushi to controlling timing? Um, a lot of times it's used to just kind of fake to see where your partner's going. And then once you can figure out where they're trying to go, throwing in that attack right off the grip um, is usually a lot easier. Oh, she's not online. She really forgot it. I told her to put it on her phone. Oh, I told her. She's killing me. No, Matthew, she wants to. Who doesn't have a charger for their iPad? Oh. I am super sorry, everybody, but we'll get her back here. Let's just be patient for a couple minutes. Oh, she's signing in. Here we go. Gerard Lewis, do you think she could outgrip me? Is that your question? Here we go. Uh, turn your phone for us. Okay. There we go. Better? Perfect. Okay. okay, sorry. Sorry, everyone. Sorry. I can't see the video or anything anymore, though. I know, because you recalled. I got to share it with you. Give me a second. Okay. 
Got to move a bunch of things around here. Technical difficulties, everybody. But we'll get there. There you go. Should be good, right? Yep, perfect. Sorry, guys. Sorry. <laughs> Let me move some stuff around here. And here we go. We are, whoa, what do we got here? Um, what? Can I bring on Henry Cejudo? I've only met him oh. once. Um, oh my God. I don't really have contact with him. The king of cringe. So while we're paused and we have you back here, um, Breakthrough has a question. Um, a lot of people talk about your mental strength, not just in sports, but just in general. Um, what do you recommend for others to become mentally tough? Um, I would say number one is you have to surround yourself with people who believe in you. Um, because when you surround yourself with people who believe in you, you start to believe in yourself. Number two one thing that I do every year that I started at Pedro's is I write down my goals um, inside and outside of my professional career. And number three, I visualize every single night, whatever it is that I want to see in my life, whatever it is I want to achieve. It, I guess it's my form of meditation. You know, I pictured the Olympics. I pictured, you know, recovering from knee surgery. I, I pictured winning the PFL belt. Um, and I visualize those things every single night. So goal setting, surround yourself with positive people. And visualize. And yes, we have done Randori together. I actually helped her warm up for all her matches at the games. Believe it or not. That was my, that was my lucky charm. Oh my god. I'm like having such bad nostalgia. Right? Brings it back. I know. I know. I like almost miss it for like two seconds and then I'm like, nah, if that. <laughs> <laughs> and Rory, yes, I have met Darcel Yanzi. We actually just filmed him for Judo Fanatics. I think his DVD's out, actually. <laughs> People are just calling you a white belt. They're remembering your Skype password, even though you can win the Olympics in the world. <laughs> okay, all right. Well, there's no need for some calling. Okay, so here we are. Let's go back into the match, because... This, this is exciting for me. So where are you sitting at mentally right now? You're up two Shitos. And there's two minutes left. Two Shitos. I'm focused on continuing to keep the pressure and not letting up. Like, I know a lot of people, once they get a lead, they kind of want to start to coast, but that was never my style or our style, and I want to continue to absolutely. She's come out put the pressure on. You know, I don't want to win. I want to win big. Um, but I want to do it in a smart, tactical way. So I'm just trying to keep my composure, keep together. I think what I'm probably thinking in my mind is she's going to win. No, 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 I just prefer fighting. And she does. She's a special mentality. She needs to get out there, fight, and she doesn't mind. She doesn't care. If she's fighting you know, the she very best in the world either. every oh time out. Well, she's fighting number two in the world here. She's the best in the world. and she's. Grady, I just saw your super chat, but let's get back to it after the fight because that's a kind of an in-depth answer. The 26-year-old from Boston. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, oh, make this his back-to-back -back <laughs> Olympic gold at some price. Yeah, can you imagine that? Back-to-back -back Olympic gold. Uh, she can't afford too many drops. Yeah, she, she really can't. She might just get a Shido for that. Was her plan really just to, like, get to her grip and not use it? She did nothing. I don't know. I don't know, man. She's uh, oh. going to have to pause it on that. Like, so, look at that. I mean, I could Google some other images and drop them in here. Are very, very strong. She just <laughs> got over a minute to go here. Um, and, yeah, I don't well, know. the Americans, I, I know, go that, and I know <laughs> quite a few of them involved. Well, there's that coach the again. Training there. They're all there, no, all shouting by the television, yeah, and they're no, all no, going for it. They won't be able to hear themselves. Oh, see, this is not good. This is not good. You gave up your sleeve. Where was your gripping? I know. From a double Olympic gold medal. That's right. She's very strong, okay? One She's minute away, very some safety strong. zone too with the two pseudo like, oh penalties against the French lady. So despite all this attacking, 
Nothing like, oh, on the geez, school, nice. Just shit, but you get the feeling like, I gotta sleep again. Okay. Out. Now it's now it's like oh let's catch our breath because panic setting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Away from no, the okay. She's got maybe now some leverage. She tried to create just, something. Ah, ah. She's got almost had both hands on in some sort of position. Probably not really. Referee yeah, calls them back in, and now that margin for error is shorter with the one penalty against the American. Yeah, she can't uh, just I sit back. Oh, no, it's been wiped that. off. So and I, I agree like, with okay, you. That should have been a Shido. It should have been. Harrison attack, is definitely on the defensive. Attack. Now she's on the attack. This is oh, what she does best. Go. She's 12 seconds away. Oh, Shameo now. Oh, it's on. And she's done it. Kayla Harrison. Look at Jimmy. She Jimmy. is Olympic champion. That is amazing. The second Olympic gold medal. And Shameo just ran out of steam. She completely ran out of steam. That it's was fantastic. Chameo was never in it. She's a pretty one. Cyclone oh, Harrison gosh. from the USA has taken all before her in Rio yeah, today. Good. Day six of competition wow, like belongs to well, Jimmy and her girl, Kayla. Oh, Unbelievable. man. Not just the athlete. Guys, is that better for the volume? volume? I just saw those come in. Behind this girl. The glory days. Not just the Olympic champion. She switched, she switched devices on us. And there it is. The gold medal goes to Kayla Harrison of the United States of America. Audrey Chimeo. Ah! Bringing it back. She could do nothing. Such That's a the good only way feeling. This girl. So amazing. Too good to be true. Runs oh. to the coach. And I think will soon run to the fans. And wow. She says she will retire after these games. Is thinking about... MMA, mixed martial arts, well, they won't be tough enough for her. Well, I, I tell you, that was just amazing. Great celebrations there. And what a way to retire. A double Olympic gold medal. So, yeah. Bring in, bring in it back. <laughs> so, back to Grady's question here. Uh, he's had knee surgery too, which sucked. But how do we recover... Uh, strength after injuries and did it ever like actually affect how you train and you know do certain things and why is she muted hold on unmute there we go and can you hear me can you hear i me can now? hear you now for some reason it just um, muted you um, honestly i have always found that it's best to put your trust in professionals when it comes to injuries and overcoming injuries I'm not an expert on the human body and the way it works, so I put my trust in the people who are experts. But no one knows your body like you do. So the key to coming back and, and to overcoming injuries is to come back at your own pace. And you only you know how, how fast you can push it, how slow you need to go, how hard you can work, you know. Um, but the good news about injuries is it's only usually one part of your body, so you can always do something else. Yeah, I think, uh, I think that's one thing that we were fortunate enough to have and that was you know actual like just because they are qualified to give advice doesn't really make them a professional do you know what i mean like we actually yeah. had like yeah. legit like they make their living solely from like entrepreneurship and providing advice to like real professional athletes like not you know some random person who got hurt on the job and you get like a sheet of paper right, out right, of a right. notebook they actually look at us no, and sure. say, hey, this is how you get better and this is how we do it fast. I mean, that's also, right, that's also like a level of like, you have to have a level of discernment where you're like, okay, this guy's obviously an idiot, but this guy, I can trust. Something I haven't mastered yet. <laughs> like personally. I, honestly, Not professionally. <laughs> every time I was injured, like, it was always with a deadline. Like, hey, I am going here whether you get me better or not. So... Let's work but under that's those circumstances. But that's because you're a serial killer. That's not normal. You can't so. say that online. That's, that's not, not nice. Sorry, 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 sorry. I don't want to cyber bully you. But yeah, don't do that. You're not <laughs> normal. <laughs> you're not normal. Uh, what judo throws do you think can be effective in MMA? Uh, ochi, kochi, sasai, foot sweeps. <laughs> uh, All while leaning against the cage, right? Correct. Minimum effort, maximum efficiency, all right? <laughs> That's what I'm all about. 
Uh, foot sweeps, I feel like, are the most most efficient in MMA. You can do hip throws, and they are exciting and big and beautiful, but it's hard to get to that position unless you're like, it's just not smart. You know, it means you're probably failed to take down. So Stephanie has an interesting question here. I'm not sure if you can answer it, but let's see. Um, just had a baby, um, but do you know any parents who successfully continued training? Any tips? like just training for fun I'm assuming I, I would assume so yeah I think you just kind of got to go at your own pace and um, <clears throat> I think one thing that's really it's important to remember for parents that I always am going to hopefully remember someday if I'm ever a parent is you can't pour from an empty cup you have to take care of yourself first so while obviously your kids are your whole world and they're your life and, and you love them and you want to raise them to be right and, and good, you can't do that if you're not taking care of yourself. So if training is something that makes you feel good and makes you happy and brings you joy and peace, um, then that's something that you need to make a priority. Even if it's twice a week, you need to be able to say, you know what, I'm going to make this priority for my mental health, my physical health. This is what I'm going to do. Alan's got a question. Tokyo Grand Slam, harder than the world championships or Olympics? No. Yeah, not even close. Like, I mean, it's obviously hard because it's poor Japanese in every weight class, but once, yeah, but, you, master, but once the, you master how to do Japanese... And the Japanese are only strong at some weight classes. Yeah, and it's also like, you can't, there's no, like, when you train your whole life for one day or when you train your whole, like... Every year I wanted to win the world championships. Every year I wanted to win the Olympics. It wasn't like a, oh, I think I'll try to win it this year, you know? So when you put that kind of pressure on yourself and then um, you show up to this event and literally everybody's there, it's so it's so hard. It's so hard. I, ne I never cared if I won the Tokyo Grand Slam, you know? I wanted to. I wanted to win everything, every time. But it wasn't the goal. I wasn't The goal wasn't to be... And sometimes you know, after going there... Because, right, sometimes we used to go before the event and it was like, I don't even want to be here anymore. Oh, yeah. Right? Like, it's like, oh. I don't like Japan. <laughs> I never wanted to be there. <laughs> uh, Faith, yeah, we pretty much did an even split between Newaza and Tachiwaza. Yeah. I, I think it was actually right down the center. Um, I think one thing that we focused on a lot that other people didn't focus on is the transition from standing to ground. You know? Have you been following the judo scene in the United States at all? Absolutely not. No, so you wouldn't know of any up-and-comers or... I did talk to one young gentleman not, not long ago. Um, oh, this will be interesting. Pro Project 2024. Who was that? Oh, oh my goodness, what Trey. is his name? Trey. Yeah, from yes. Louisiana. Oh, you spoke to him. <laughs> I think he's from Louisiana. Anyways, I talked to him. Let him know what he needed to do if he wanted to be successful. And uh, looking forward to seeing his career. Told him I would follow along. Um, but other than that, I think judo left, not judo, but USA judo left a little bit of a sour taste in my mouth. So. So do you, I, uh, do you have anything in like the back of your mind that you draw from to kind of like push through the tough times? Or is it uh, just a goal set as a goal met and just charge forward? Yeah, a goal set as a goal met. I mean, I think the only way that I have ever known, known how to get over stuff is just keep putting one foot in front of the other. You know, when I stop is when I get into trouble. Um, so I try and keep that in mind and... <laughs> Listen, I don't have life figured out by any means, you know, um, but I think baby steps is key. Can you talk about the Fearless Foundation? Some people here in chat are asking about it and just what you're doing with yeah. it, what people need to know, and if they want to make some donations to it, how they can do that. Yeah. Um, so the Fearless Foundation is a foundation that I started right after the 2012 Olympics. Um, I was sexually abused by my first judo coach. And 
right after the 2012 Olympics, I sort of started, you know, most athletes, or at least gymnasts, swimmers, athletes who win a gold medal usually get like, you know, oh, their phone's ringing off the hook with endorsement calls or invitations to the ESPYs or this or that. And my phone was ringing off the hook with like, you know, can you come share your story at my daughter's school or will you come speak to my organization in, you know, Oklahoma or can you come talk to a darkness to light group or can you come talk to this um, inner city, inner city rape crisis center. Um, and one thing I realized is that there's a lot of really good organizations, but they're all at a very local and regional level. So my goal was um, to become a big, or my goal is to become a big organization for survivors of sexual abuse. And I have a lot of things that I'm trying to get done with it. I'm just only one human, so it's a little bit tough. But the number one thing is education. So I wrote a book with two psychologists from McLean Hospital. Um, it's called Fighting Back. You can get it on Amazon. The link is on my website, KaylaHarrison.com, or it's in my Instagram bio, or it's uh, those two places you can find it, or Amazon. Um, you said Amazon. And basically, okay, so basically <laughs> the book is not a memoir, and it's not a textbook. It's a combination of both. So it uses my story as a guideline for what sexual abuse looks like. Um, I kept diary entries throughout the entire period, um, so you, you find out this is... This is what grooming looks like. This is why kids don't say something. This is how you can talk to your child if you think something is going on. This is the court process. This is the aftermath. And also give them a little bit of hope. You know, this is the shiny gold medal or even two gold medals at the end of the tunnel. Um, so that was the big first step for me is the educational part of it. You know, I remember in school I learned a lot about stranger danger and safe sex and saying no to drugs. And, you know, we have a lot of educational material on bullying and all sorts of things, you know, eating disorders, everything. But I never remember anyone talking to me about what you should do if someone close to you tries to take advantage of you. So I think the first thing we need to do is educate our society. And with the book, um, all of my uh, profits go to my foundation and my goal is um, to get some legislation or, or to get somewhere through whoever it may be passed so that the book has to be part of the seventh grade health class curriculum. You know, I want kids to have to talk about it. I want them to have to read about it, and I want them to have to to understand what what this looks like. I also think it's important for anyone who is involved with kids. You know, whether you're um, a social worker, or you're a cop, or you're a doctor, or you're a parent, or you're a teacher, or you're a judo instructor, or you're a tennis instructor. You know, I think you should have to to read this and be educated and and know what the signs are and know what to look for. So yeah. That's what you can. Uh, that's the first step for me. There's obviously a lot more that I want to accomplish with it. Um, a lot more in the works for it. Right now, it's kind of all a little bit put on hold. Um, the foundation is going to have its own website pretty soon. But in the meantime, you can go to KaylaHarrison.com and click on Foundation if you want to learn more. Um, we have a question here from Dane. Leading up to competitions, how many days a week were you doing long randori sessions versus cardio versus technical drills? Um, a week before a tournament, we usually didn't do rand like we would do. Well, we were usually fighting overseas, so we would usually leave like the Wednesday before the competition. So maybe we would do light randori on Monday night. Um, and then just so everybody's really on the same page, light randori isn't like half speed. It just means we do like five rounds instead of eight. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Like it's That's it's I mean. yeah. The physicality output is always the same. Yeah. Um, and then when you get to the tournament, basically you're just kind of you know most of the guys. Travis would cut weight. I, I would watch yeah. him cut weight. <laughs> Um, I would eat. <laughs> Not much has changed. <laughs> um, and then fight. I would never really like. I usually didn't lift the week of a tournament. I mean, I would lift if it wasn't. It just depended. Like when we would have to leave, if it was in, if the tournament was in Kazakhstan or if it was in, you know, Great Britain. Yeah, and I think um, I think it's a hard question just to answer in general because we're from the states and that we go to tournaments to train sometimes so yeah. sometimes yeah. we're doing hard rounds even up until the day we leave because yeah. we're training because we want to win a tournament in a month from now or two months from now 
and then yeah. that one might have a taper but not all do and some do it just really depends i mean on the pretty much the year. only time i ever tapered in my entire career was for the olympics and for the world championships everything else i didn't care about yeah so I trained as if I was training for the Olympics and the World Championships. I lifted, I ran, I did judo, I, I mean, I did everything. And Nicholas, we didn't use bands for training. We would use them to like cut weight with or, you know, do an outside workout at a training camp maybe, but it was never a part of like a daily or even weekly routine. Do you think three or four hours of Randoria a week is overtraining? I think no. it's that should be a day. <laughs> well, <laughs> no, but no, I don't think three or four hours a week is overtraining. I mean, it depends on what your goal is. Like, if you're just a guy who wants to get in shape, yeah, it's too much. But if you want to be Olympic champion, no, it's not enough. So, what's harder, the World Championships or Olympic Games? Uh, the world championships are harder the Olympics are more prestigious I'm the other way do you think the Olympics are harder I only, I only think that because it's the it's the only tournament where like the world is actually prepared and tried not to hurt each other like everybody pretty much goes into it healthy but some people compete like the month before the world some people compete right after the world because they did poorly like the Olympics is the one time where everybody's like, I am, the last six months is in preparation for this. I don't think every country yeah. does that for the worlds. And worlds yeah, worlds can be a, like a hit or miss because they've always changed. Like there was a while where you could throw in two countries. Yeah. Two people for the same weight. Yeah. I don't know. I mean, I've, I've, I've also never more, like, won more than I think the Olympics is really hard and, and the build up and the every you, like you're totally right I'm just going off of like my record at the Worlds obviously uh-huh. it's pretty damn hard because I only won it once you know that but me. that's what I mean because if like your results aren't there but you are also doing other things in preparation for the Olympics right yeah. like you did other events that made you possibly perform less at the worlds and when people do that it it lessens the worlds to me as a as a whole i I think i think by the time like may hits or june and you know who's going to the olympics like you have a solid dedicated time of like i i'm a hundred percent focused and i don't think the world does that for people i think it does for some but not for everybody (laughs) Hey, I gotta read my niece to bedtime story. We gotta okay. wrap this up. Okay. All right. Well, we'll call it a day. Let me see if I can find one more in here. I think I think I saw some super chats come in. Yeah. So, yeah, we'll make the super chats the last ones here. So, we ever do online tutorials like Rana? Do you, you think judo step by step instruction flow charts can be created, James? I don't think a flow chart could really be created. It's too dynamic, and your options are limited by like height and weight and left right and there's just too many different things and too many variables to ever really follow and if you dumbed it down to like have it make sense one person would throw like a loop in it that would crush the entire chart and you're welcome nam i'm not even gonna say that i'm gonna call you 76 for the super chat i'm glad you liked the q a session maybe if we're lucky she'll do another one and I'll pull her London matches up. Her first time ever. Yeah, I had fun. I feel like we should do like a, we should do like a Kayla and Travis like catch up. <laughs> Nuh-uh. Coffee with Kayla and Travis. Uh uh-uh. uh. I'm, Re- I'm reminisce it. all the old times. Yeah, we could do that for hours. Okay, so here I have actually one more match pulled up, and it's short. So let's let's watch this one. Let's watch this one. It's two minutes. It's your semifinal. Do you even remember it? No. No? Oh, and even? Rio? Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. The, the Slovenian. Yes. It's short. 
Yeah, yeah. Here we but go. just out of I'm curiosity. Never, I've never, lo I've never lost this girl. So I know oh, really? Yeah. Well, that's a nice I'm semi eight, to I'm have. Like, I mean, not I'm for nothing, no Turkish really champ, probably thought the same Harrison. thing. She's ready to go. She's the number <laughs> one in the world. Just saying. He totally did. White you know he did. Anna Marie Velencic <laughs> of Slovenia. I remember when I used to really practice that joke on you and you used to get all two. pissed off. Dude, you're such an asshole. That's here. why. Is be I hate that joke. Just so <laughs> you almost I thought he was dead. I thought he might die. I hurt my hand doing it. Oh, yeah. it was terrible. I was ready to pop his head off. Worth it. There was another left sail. You see that? Maybe I did drill left sail, and I just don't remember. I don't. I don't remember you ever doing it. <laughs> I think apparently I did, man. There's like 20 think, left sails. I think you just made it up on the fly at the game, and you were like, "This feels right today." <laughs> Yeah, I'm feeling a left sail. You had a debate with Suhudo? Somebody's yeah. asking what I thought about it. I didn't even know it existed. Guys, I, I really live in a rock. Like, I live under a we're rock right now. We're not getting into that tonight. Okay. Travis, Travis will take Henry's side, and then I'll get pissed off, and then it'll not be a Why good Why will I take his side? What was it even about? For short to a ten minute golden it's score. about what is better, be judo or wrestling. You can guarantee that. For what? <laughs> just in general, in the Olympics, and light, like everything. It was just very deep. It was very intense. And he wanted. He said he's the greatest combat athlete of all time, and I said, that is yet to be seen. I said, That's we'll see true. what happens. I agree. That's not it's true. not true. But, but you know what I did said, think was interesting? What if we ran an event, right? Hear me out on this, guys. Hear, hear, hear me out on this. Yeah, I'm not really interested. No, no big deal. I'm just winning the semifinal of the Olympics. <laughs> but what if, you, what if you held an event where you did judo, freestyle wrestling, BJJ with the gi, jiu-jitsu no gi, with with IBJJF rules and a sub only no time limit, like five events, back to back, like a tournament style, one on one, to see who was better, like to see who was really a better grappler. Overall. Overall, like you actually, every single event. as the rules stand for that sport, as the rules stand for the sport, like you got to actually put on a singlet and shoes and wrestle. Five different events. Yes. Almost like a almost like a triathlete, right? But like. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. I like it. I like what's, it. That's what's the cool. thing for grappler with five? What's that word like? Not try, not quad. What is it? Oh, is it pent? That, that thing for grappling. Pentathlon. And, th and then really find out like who really is a, a good grappler. Because you throw Henry in a gi, he's gone. Do you see me run back? Do you see me run back? Because I wasn't done. I'm ready. <laughs> Sorry. Anyways, you I agree. Do That's do a really good idea. You should do it. We're not rewinding it. They saw. No. I okay. broke her arm. It's cool. <laughs> Anyways. Okay, let's let's go back to this slide right here and just that'll be it for tonight. I'll let you go. But thank you for staying on longer than the hour. It's been like an hour and a half, so thank you for that. Has it really? Oh my! It has. God. Okay, I gotta go. She's definitely asleep. You got me in trouble with Kyla. I was supposed to read her the scrawny tawny lion or something. Oh man. Oh well. Okay. Anyways, thank there's you. always tomorrow. She's not in school. Hey, thank you guys so much. Thanks, Travis, for an awesome night of reminiscing and good questions. Let's do it again. Okie dokie. I'll try. Bye. Bye. So there you guys go. Uh, that'll be it for tonight. I hope everybody really enjoyed it. Um, and yeah, I kind of like that idea as a sport. Like none of this like half made up rule thing. Like let's just do all five sports and then see what happens. I don't know. Yeah, I think it'd be interesting. But thank you guys for hanging out with us and watching and participating. And thank you everybody for the super chats. I really appreciate it. Um, it means a lot to me and the channel. Really going to try to keep this community growing and keep this up. And I think I'm going to try to convince Angie and Colton to come on here and kind of give you know a side-by-side -side on some of their metal performing competition matches for you guys. Just to, again, give you guys that inside scoop as to what the high-level judokas are really thinking. So thank you guys. Um, I should be looking over here. I'm so used to looking at the screen. But thank you guys. It means a lot. I'll see you guys at a later time. And remember, if you haven't subscribed, please do so. It means a lot. It helps the channel stay alive. Thank you.